Okay, today we're going to have a look at tracing a, uh, an image. So I'm going to start by selecting my image. So I'm going to go to File Open here. And as you can see, there are no images showing. That's because at the bottom here it says Files of Type Silhouette Studio. So I'm going to drop down the box and change that to All Files. And you can see that I've actually placed two images on the desktop that we can use. I'm going to use Apple One. I'm going to double click it and immediately it appears here. I can bring it down and I can resize it if we want to see it slightly better. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that I have the correct size of paper. As I don't have an A3 printer, I need to change my page to A4. Move that across like that. Um, it's worth doing after you've brought the image in, as you can see from the bottom, when you bring an image in, it will always open it in a new page, not on the page you were working on. So I've changed it to A4, and I'm also going to come up here, and you see these little brackets, and if I click on that, it says registration marks. And I'm going to click on show registration marks. I always use the standard registration mark sizes, but they can be <coughs> excuse me, played around with if you want to. So I'm ready to trace my image now. I come up here to the little blue square with the yellow, and it says open the trace window. Click on that and select trace area. Then by holding the left button on my mouse down, I'm going to draw a box around the trace area. Now when you let it go, you'll notice that there's a slight yellow in, um, but that would not give you a good trace. So we're going to come over here and we're going to take out high pass filter, and immediately you can see the change. And we're going to come further down to threshold and increase the threshold until we are satisfied with what we're, we're seeing there. And for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to trace and detach. That is because the apple was on a square of white paper. So I'm going to press trace and detach. Now, if I click on my apple and move it, you can see that I have the waste there. I can click on that and press delete on my keyboard. So now I just have the apple. Um, that, that, to do that is particularly useful if you have, want to put a lot of items on the screen that you're going to cut and print, uh, then you don't have the white pieces overlapping. So now I'm going to do the same thing again. Select trace area. I'm going to draw over it like that. I'm going to take out the high pass filter. Increase the threshold. And then I'm going to trace the outer edge because obviously there's no cutout in the middle. And if I go like that, you can see that I have, not only do I have the image, I also have the uh, the cut line. If I undo that and undo again, they'll be joined up. I'm going to hold down my left, cursor, my left button on my mouse, select it, right click and group them together. Never use the compound path uh, action when you're dealing with something that's going to be printed. So now I can click on my apple, I can resize it, I can come up here and I can duplicate it. And in order to cut it, I would simply go, I would send it to the silhouette and then you will have a message which says click here to print or click here to skip printing. If you've already printed it using just sending it straight to the printer, you obviously click here to skip printing. It tells you to set the rollers at 13 inches, mine are always there, and then you press continue. You would then choose detect automatically. Now I haven't printed this at the moment, so I won't detect automatically, but clicking that, once you've loaded the paper into your machine, the machine will run the paper through and it will find square here which should be in the top left hand corner the line there and the line there um, make sure you have the lid to the machine down and the optical eye really rarely lets you down the only piece of advice I would offer you is that you make sure that when you are putting your piece of paper in you are loading cutting mat on your machine if you load material it will load to a different place 
the other thing I would say is that it is always better to have your piece of paper slightly inside of the lines on the cutting mat rather than over the edge and outside the lines. Uh, for some reason the optical eye does not like it if you take your piece of paper above or to the side of the lines. Um, so you're always better bringing it in very, very slightly and then it should find your, uh, your registration marks quite easily and it will cut it for you. So if we just go uh, back up here again and then we open the file again, we drop it down, change it to all files and this time we're going to open Apple 2. So I'll double click on that and now we have a slightly different kind of Apple. So I'm going to check my page. I'm going to tell it that it's an A4 page, 12 by 12 cutting mat. I'm going to put in my registration marks and then I'm going to choose my uh, area by selecting the trace area, holding down the left button, pulling over. Again, I'm going to remove my high pass theatre filter, sorry, and I'm, I'm just going to increase the threshold very slightly because the edges are very slightly rough there. So I'm going to just do it till the edges look smooth. And then I'm going to trace and detach. Pull it away. Click on that. Delete that. And now I have my apple. Go back to trace select area. I probably could have increased the threshold slightly more to get the apple slightly smoother. But anyway, hold down my left button. Come down. Take out the high pass theatre. I don't know why I keep saying theatre, filter, and I'm going to increase just to smooth out those edges slightly. Okay, now this time I'm going to actually press on trace, and that is because we have an area here which we want to cut out as well. So if I press trace, and then I pull my apple away, you can see this time I've got the hole in the apple. So you've got trace the outer edge, and trace when it will trace the whole thing. So I'm going to do that, join them back together, right click, group, and then I'm ready to print and cut. I print them and then I cut them. I hope this has been helpful to you.